we are going to look at what we call road accident and how we can protect ourselves being safe from every road accident so we know that for us to be safe from road accident it is God who can save us from road accident but there are some things that we also need to do on our own part in order to be safe from road accident so in today's video we want to look at the structure of the road we look the causes of road accident and we are also teaching you how you can protect yourself how you can be safe from every road accident so that is what we are going to look in today's video and before I want to continue I will just want you first of all you have to make sure you share the video you have to make sure you subscribe and you also need to know that you have to help your friends and family so I just want us to get into the first thing we are going to look at so this is what is happening on the road and the causes of road accident they result in, in either you see broken hands broken legs dead people being injured and many other things so this is these are some of the effect of road accident in our community so in this video i just want to teach you how you can also teach other people how they can always be free from road accident so looking at here this is the structure of the road and this road it is divided into portion or it is divided into section or into part and all of us we are supposed to use this road together so we have here we have on this road this is the structure of our road here we have what we call the pedestrian that is the pedestrian part with the pedestrian people who are moving our legs we also have our own portion on this road then we also have portion of people who are riding who are cyclists and riders who are moving with motorbikes and all the rest then car trucks so all of us we are going to use this road so that is why on the road we have a lot of accident on the road so in this lesson i just want you i just want to teach you how you can always be free from road accident so the first thing we need to do is that this is our road and there are some roads that we pedestrian we have our part that is we have our section that is being provided for us so that we can move on it freely and looking at the road like this it is a road that has a pedestrian part a part that gives pedestrian the priority to move on this road and any road that has a pedestrian part the road the pedestrian the pedestrian they are at least 85 percent secure from road accident so when you see any road that is recommended for pedestrian it has what we call the pedestrian sign which is this yellow this um this blue in circle then you see the image of a person inside and if you're a cyclist you also see the one that gives you the priority to use the road so these are these signs are the signs that whenever we see this sign it gives us the priority that that section of the road belongs to us so if you are a pedestrian you will see this sign and if you are a cyclist you also see this sign if you are using a motorcycle you also see this sign that gives you the priority of that section of the road if you are using a car you also have your own signs we also give you the priority to use that portion of the road so these signs give us priority give us priority that that section of the road belongs to us so let's go into what we call the main causes or the effect of road accident we know that on road 
like this one that I have set that has section that we have to just follow on this road accident on this road is a little bit reduced to to a certain level but now if we are moving on a road that does not have any of this does not have the pedestrian part how would the pedestrian manage to move on this road and we know that all of us we have to use this road so if the road does not have a footpath how would pedestrian manage to walk on this road so that is what we are going to look now so if you are a pedestrian and it happened that you have to move on a road like this one there are there is a two-way ordinary road and it does not have a path for pedestrian pedestrian now have to walk on the left side of the road so if there is a road that does not have a pedestrian path or a footpath all pedestrians are supposed to walk on the left side of the road why are pedestrians supposed to move on the left side of the road pedestrians they are moving on the left side of the road because all vehicles they are moving on the right side and you are moving on the left side because you want to face you have to be facing oncoming vehicles like in the picture here when you are moving on the road like this one that does not have a footpath this part here this arrows here shows you how you are supposed to move when you are moving on the road you know that on the road when all of us we are using the road the first thing that we must have in mind is that we have to be concentrated because the road is mixed up we have first thing we have to concentrate whenever we are on the road we don't have to be distracted we don't have to be to lose of control over ourselves but we have to be focused we have to be attentive we have to observe far as we are moving on the road whenever you are moving on the road make sure you are moving on the left side and your eyes should always be focused on oncoming vehicle you have to see the vehicle 150 meters far away and you have to observe the vehicle when the vehicle comes and the vehicle passes you know that this is what is happening on the road and your eyes have to be on the road the same thing with a driver when you are driving on the road the first thing you have to be focus you have to look on the road and see if a child because a child can still jump into the road children can still be playing on the road people can still be crossing so on the road you have to first of all you have to observe observe me that you have to look well 150 meters away know what is happening on the road you have to evaluate evaluate me that you have to evaluate calculate should I go should I stop if you see a child running to the road what should I do should I stop so those type of things you have to evaluate when it shows that you should go then you have to act but if it shows that you are not supposed to go you just have to stop so whenever we are on the road we have to be always observed we have to evaluate and we have to calculate we are not supposed to be distracted whenever we are on the road and whenever we are moving on the road pedestrians are not supposed to be moving on the right side of the road from this video that you have watched for today i just wanted to have in mind that whenever you are moving on the road you are not supposed to move on the right side of the road the right side of the road is this side that when you are moving you are going in front and a vehicle is coming behind you without you seeing so you have to always make sure that you go to the left side of the road so that you will be seeing incoming that is oncoming vehicle so that you observe them and whenever the danger arrives you will know how to escape so that is one of the things that we have to do on the road we have to always be attentive we also have to be observing and we also have to calculate so we as pedestrian we are moving on the left side of the road so let's go into another thing that we are going to look at
So now, this is our road. When we are using the road, we have talked about pedestrian. Now, if you are a cyclist and you have to ride a bicycle, we know that on the road, a cyclist, you first of all have to protect yourself. Protect yourself with what? With helmet, because you know that whenever a cyclist has an accident, he always the head is always in danger, and you have you always scratch yourself and always fly over vehicles whenever you hit. So, looking at the picture here, we will see how um, the accident involved whenever a cyclist have to involve in an accident and they end up being injured, having broken hands, broken head and some result to death. So whenever we are using the road, we should always observe. You as a cyclist, first of all, you have to protect yourself, you wear your helmet, then you have to wear your able protection. These are most of the part when a cyclist involved in an accident is always having broken head, broken heart, crushing of the elbows and all the rest. So whenever we are you are a cyclist and you are using the road, you also have to protect yourself. Then let's go into what we call the rider. If the motorcycle, they are sister cyclists, we call them the riders. These are people who cause a lot of accident on the road due to unnecessary speed on the road, unnecessary overloading on the road. So whenever you are riding a bike or a rider, first of all, know that you also have to also protect yourself with your helmet. So the helmet is always there to protect you so that whenever you jump, even you fly and involve. So as a rider, you have to carry your normal load and you have to stay away from other people's sight and you have to concentrate whenever you are driving on the road. So now, let's go into what we say it is the main cause of road accident. The main cause of road accident in our today life is what we call the mobile phone. The mobile phone has caused a lot of dangers as far as road accident is concerned. Whenever you are on the road and you are moving on the road, you are driving on the road, you are a cyclist, you are a rider, you are not supposed to answer a phone calls or manipulating of mobile phone whenever you are on the road. A road is a place that we don't need to be distracted. We have to concentrate. Looking at the pictures and the things that are happening in these pictures are main or are the main thing that cause road accident on our road. A driver, when you are driving, you are not supposed to be manipulating your phone because when you manipulate your phone, you lose concentration and you can easily be involved in an accident. Either you hit somebody, or you hit another car, or you lost control over your steering. So whenever we are driving, we are not supposed to manipulate phone. We are not supposed to be making calls. Whenever you want to make call, you make sure you clear and stop. Looking at the pictures, this person is manipulating the phone and he cannot see what is happening in front of him. So due to this, you cause a lot of accidents. So whenever we are driving, we are not supposed to be manipulating phones. Looking at the riders, looking at what is going on in the pictures, you see them driving, but you see them riding, carrying children, but they are still trying to answer the phone calls. So these are some of the things that causes a lot of accidents on our road and when we are also moving as pedestrian we see the incident of pedestrian pedestrian they are moving on the road answering of phone calls and you are distracted and you can also be involved in an accident even the vehicle is coming behind you 
you will not know the vehicle is coming in front of you you are not seeing because of loss of concentration the your phone the mobile phone has taken away your mind and you can answer the phone call and enter into the road phone calls are good for us to answer our calls but reception is good when we stop even as a pedestrian when you have an incoming call the first thing you have to do you have to stop uh, you have to stop you take uh, two steps away from the road and you stand and you answer your call when you are finished you pocket your phones and you continue your journey moving and answering call on the road cause a lot of accident because you answer calls and enter the road you manipulate phones and enter the road and it will cause a lot of accidents so these are some of the causes that that bring us a lot of road accidents so we also have the place of children playing on the road you see people playing on the road playing on the road people running you are running to cross the road so running to cross the road is this not always good whenever you want to cross the road there are places that have been provided for pedestrians to always cross the road so always follow your path where there is zebra crossing the zebra crossing it is a place it is a road created for pedestrians for you to cross don't run across the road children don't run across the road as we are seeing in the picture here because if you run across the road at the point where you are not supposed to cross you know that vehicle have priority over that place more than your pedestrian pedestrian have priority when you have the sign of a zebra crossing the zebra crossing is the crossroad for pedestrian so whenever we are moving we know that pedestrian have priority over the zebra crossing the zebra crossing is their own junction for them to cross the road on the normal length of the road they don't have any priority the vehicle have priority over that part so whenever we want to cross the road we have to look for where there is zebra crossing and we move on our path that gives us the priority and you'll see the sign of zebra crossing will give us the priority that this section of the road belongs to us and any driver who is coming closer to the zebra crossing has to slow and stop and give you priority because it is your place to cross the road so i still want you to share the video to many people as you can as we continue to look on how we can get protected being safe from every road accident so let's go into another section how we can always be safe from road accident So in this vehicle, these are how the seat of these vehicles are. So we have the two seat in front and the three seat behind. Whenever you want to travel and you want to always be safe from road accident, there are things in the vehicle that can protect you whenever you have road accident. So we have equipment like we have the airbag. The airbag protects from accident whenever the car hit the airbag will puff off like in the picture below to protect our face our chest 
and some part of our body so that we should not be damaged or being broken. So there is the work of the air back. We also have what we call the seat bear. The seat bear always keep us on the chair so that we should not go above the windscreen or go through, pass through the windows and go out from the car. So the, the seat bear always keep us on the chair. So this is the seat bear whenever you are traveling, you enter in the car, always make sure you put on your seat bear for your own protection. We call it the seat bear or you call it the safety bear. The safety bear is the right name. So we call it the safety bear because it is for your own safety. So whenever you want to enter into this car to travel, where in this car can you be always safe when you involved in an accident? So looking at the pictures of the passenger cars, we have seen time, kind by kind, type of accident involved whenever a passenger car is being in being involved in an accident so now i want to give you the right seat for you to always sit so that whenever you whenever this car an accident you will always be free i will give you at least 90 percent security of your safety so this is how the seat of this vehicle are we have the two the driver the passenger then we have the third seat behind we give the best seat the best seat for you to always be safe in this car is the middle seat that is the middle seat behind the middle seat behind we always secure that seat for children but whenever you want to travel in this private car always take the middle seat behind that middle seat it has at least a it has at least a level protection that whenever you get in a road accident those seat behind are always protected and you always be safe looking at all the images of passengers car of a private car having an accident we always see those middle seats they are always being secured those seat behind they are always being secured if the middle seat is not there which other seat can you take take now the last seat behind the driver the last seat behind the driver is always being protected whenever an accident in peace involved because we consider that driver do not die in an accident any driver who dies in any accident know that that driver was a door driver the driver did not observe the driver was not concentrating that is why he has to die in an accident so whenever a driver is concentrating and he saw an obstacle or in the vehicle what the driver does is that the driver will give the passenger car to the oncoming vehicle to hit by the passenger car not his own side so that he will be free so whenever you sit behind the driver it also guarantee your safety because that side of the vehicle will not be touched and maybe you will come out from that car very safe without any bridges so whenever you are traveling know that in this private car always take the middle seat or the seat behind the driver these are the safe seats that you can always find in this vehicle whenever this vehicle has an accident so if you have not shared this video i want you to share subscribe because i'm going to take you into more things that you will learn the frame of the car always take the back seat not to be mushed together so whenever you are traveling in this 
vehicle always take the middle seat or you take the last seat behind the driver so that is for your safety so let's go now if you want to enter into a bus and you want to travel inside a bus which seat shall you take inside the bus that will may guarantee your safety so whenever we are traveling and we have to enter in a bus which is a seven seat, a 70 seat, 50 seat or 100 seat so where are we supposed to sit in this vehicle we know that in a 70 in a bus the seats are in rows the seats and the row we have the two the two rows and we have the row with three chairs and we have the row with two chairs the rows with three chairs are always on the driver side and the rows with two chairs are always on the passenger side so whenever you are traveling and you have to enter into any bus i recommend you again whenever you are traveling and you want to take a bus and these are the seat which oh these are the places which i recommend you to always sit there because it will guarantee your safety so when you enter into the bus we have the driver is in front we have the first seat behind the driver the second seat behind the driver the third seat behind the driver the fourth seat behind the driver whenever you want to sit you now sit from the fourth seat count the first seat second seat test seat, the fourth seat behind the driver those are the places in the car where it will guarantee your safety you take the, the fourth seat the fourth fifth seat seven eight nine ten eleven twelve those middle seats are always good whenever you want to travel looking at the pictures we have here and the type of accident these vehicles the 70 seater the buses have been involved in the accident they have been involved in an accident we always see that those middle section of the vehicles are always being safe from road accident and whenever you want to enter into a bus to travel go into any car to travel i want to recommend you that you should never sit beside the window you should never sit beside the window looking at the structure we have here looking at the images we are having here we see that whenever two buses they clash together the first thing that shatter from the buses is what we call the glasses the windows they get shutters and everybody that sits beside the windows will get injured all the time so whenever you want to travel do not sit beside the window i have told you count four seats count three seats behind the driver the four seat you sit there but don't sit beside the window take now those seats in the corridor those four first seats in the corridors and you make sure you put your safety belt because whenever the, the bus jam those seats in the middle in the corridor they are always safe because those people beside the um, near the window beside the window the bus can tear into two they can involve in an accident that that it can collide with the trailer and the bus can tear as we are seeing all the images here the bus can tear into part those people who are sitting beside the window those people we always call them they are all dead people because those are the first people that that they will be affected and they will die on the spot so never you travel and you sit beside the window then always sit in the corridor that is at the corridor the last thing just for first seat at the corridor always take those seats because those seats are very secure you will not end up with broken legs because some of the people who are inside they end up with broken legs because when the car hit those chairs they trim people like so whenever you sit at the at the corridor the last the first seat on the corridor 
you will always be safe and you should not always sit at the back of the car the back of the car is very dangerous because at the back of the car we have the tires is there and we are not supposed to sit there when you want to sit in a car at the back come three come three a seat from behind come three seat from behind the back seat the first the three seat then you can now sit just in the middle so those are some of those those are some of the places whereby if we can always sit in the car we will always be safe no matter what